Hello, Steve Sofalato here. I'd like to have a more detailed conversation about paperweights, specifically the math calculations required to convert between basis weight and grammage. So the purpose of this presentation is to get a better understanding and meaning of the definition of paper basis weight and grammage, GSM. I want you to be able to verify and confirm that a stated basis weight or grammage is in fact correct. I want you to be able to convert between different paperweight units, grammage to basis weight and vice versa, basis weight into grammage. And this would be a good exercise for making measurements and applying math skills for calculating and converting basis weights. So the industry has expectations that we in academia educate our students to possess skills and perform specific tasks such as basic math calculations so that you're successful in your employment. Now, some people get math anxiety. Uh, all I want you to know is don't let the math bother you. Don't let it frustrate you. Don't let it intimidate you. It's just simple math, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So what I would recommend you do is, you know, list all the facts that you know, and then use reason and logic to think and calculate and solve these conversions. Now, most calculators have built in converters that you can use. And on a smartphone, there's apps and on a computer, there's online internet websites that you can use to check your answers. By now, we should have a good definition for basis weight. Uh, it includes three things, the weight, the number of sheets, and the size of the paper. So the symbol for basis weight, of course, is pounds or the number sign, hashtag. The sheets is always 500, which is called a ream. And the size depends and varies with the paper grade or the type. Bond papers are 17 by 22, book papers are 25 by 38, and cover papers are 20 by 26. So because the size varies, basis weight can be confusing, which is why we want to use ultimately uh, grammage. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here on 60 pound offset paper. So we have a uh, carton or a case from the paper mill and the label says that it's a 60 pound offset paper, which means it's uncoated. We're gonna take two sheets of 19 by 25 and weigh them. Uh, we're going to take two sheets because two sheets comes out to 25 by 38, which is the same as the basis size. Plus, when you measure two sheets, you have a larger sample size, and that reduces any errors that you might have in rounding. The weight of the two sheets is 51.8 grams. We're, convert, we're going to convert the grams into pounds, and we know that one pound is 453.59 grams. So when you take 51.8 grams and divide it by 453, you get 0.1142 pounds. Now what we need to do is take one sheet of 25 by 38 and convert it into a 500 sheet ream. So you're gonna take that and multiply it by 500 and the answer is 57 pound. So 57 pound is approximately the same equivalent to a 60 pound paper. That's certainly within tolerances. And we'll talk more about tolerances in a second, but you have to realize that during dry winter months, paper often loses some moisture or relative humidity. Now, the reason why that answer is close enough or good enough is because making paper is a complicated manufacturing process. You rarely can be perfect and exact all the time. So what we have is manufacturing specifications that include a target aim that you're shooting for and associated plus or minus tolerance limits, which are allowable and permissible. So in statistics, think of it like a margin of error or like a confidence level. So a major variable in paper manufacturing uh, in, current, in terms of the weight is the retained moisture content. So as you might recall, paper starts out at the head box on the Fordner paper making machine 
as 99% water, just 1% cellulose fiber. And then when we get towards the finishing end, where the paper has already been dried, it's now just has a 5% moisture content, which means it's 95% cellulose fiber. So the uh, paper industry has a practice of stating that basis weight is within a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. So if you take a 60 pound paper and take 5% of that, that's three pounds. So that means that if you're shooting for a target of 60 pound paper, their tolerance limit of three pounds allows them to be at a low of 57 and at a high of 63 pounds. So if 89 grams per meter 5% uh, of 89 grams per square meter is 4.5 grams, which means the tolerance limit on grammage would be somewhere between 84.5 to 93.5 grams. Another thing that's useful to be able to do is calculate and determine equivalent weight paper. So if I have a 60 pound offset paper, what is that equivalent to in bond paper? So you know equivalent names for offset paper would be book, abbreviated BK, and text, abbreviated TX. Uh, basis size for all of those are 25 by 38 inches. And if you calculate the area, it's 950 square inches. Equivalent names for bond would be things like writing paper, office, or copier paper. And the basis size here is 17 by 22 inches. And if you calculate the area, it's 374 square inches. Since they both already are in pounds and they're 500 sheets in a ream, the only conversion we need to do is to compensate for the different basis sizes. So if you take the area 950 and divide by the other area 374, you get an answer of 2.54. So if you take the 60 pound book and you divide it by 2.54, you get an equivalent weight of 23.6 pounds, which is rounding up is 24 pound bond. So the 60 pound paper that we've been using is equivalent to 24 pound bond paper. Okay, so let's now determine how we can calculate grammage or GSM. Again, it's three things in the definition. It's the weight, the number of sheets, and the size. The symbol for grammage is GSM. The weight is in grams, not pounds. It's only just one single sheet, not 500 sheets or a ream. And the size is always gonna be A0. That makes it more convenient and less confusing than grammage. Now we know that AO area is one meter squared, which is the same thing as a thousand millimeters squared. The actual physical dimension or size of an AO sheet is 841 millimeters by 1,189 millimeters. And if you calculate the area, it's almost exactly a thousand millimeters squared, which would be one meter squared. There's a little bit of rounding error there. And if you wanted to convert the AO into inches, it would be 33.1 inches by 46.8 inches with an area of 1,549 square inches. Let's take a look, look at another example here, but this time for 89 GSM. The label on the paper says the paper is 89 GSM. We don't have to worry about the grade or the type of paper because in grammage, the size is always A0. That's the advantage of it. It's not confusing. We're still gonna weigh those two sheets in 19 by 25. It still stays the same weight, 51.8 grams. So the only thing we need to do now is convert the sizes of the areas. So we gotta convert from offset to AO. Offset's 25 by 38. So its total area is 950 square inches. So if you take the 1,549 and divide by the 950, you get a conversion factor of 1.631. So if you take the 51.8 grams and multiply it by the conversion factor of 1.631, you get an answer of 84.5 GSM. 
which is very close to 89 GSM, certainly within the tolerance limits of the stated paper mill variation. As always, thank you for watching this presentation, and I hope that you found it interesting and informative. Until next time, goodbye.